guys, you welcome back. Hope you guys are feeling good. My name is Bukumi BK Crown. So we're gonna be checking out this video titled 2000 year old book reviewed lost chapter with terrifying knowledge about the human race. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let's check it out. Ancient book of Enoch. It's a book that was quite popular during the first 700 years of church history, but then faded from sight. Nobody republished it. It disappeared until the book of Enoch was rediscovered in the Ethiopian region of Abyssinia. Few historical writings arouse as much curiosity as the book of Enoch, which has been described as forbidden from the Bible for unveiling profound truths about the mysteries of creation. It's a book filled with sensual fallen angels, violent giants, strange cosmology, and world-changing revelations. The Book of Enoch is an apocryphal Old Testament book about events that occurred a century before the birth and ministry Jesus. of Jesus. Wow. Most Christian denominations do not consider this book to be divinely inspired mm. scripture. At the end of the 4th century, the original manuscript disappeared. Mm. It was later discovered in Abyssinia, Ethiopia in 1773. Mm. Only the Ethiopian Christian sect includes the Book of Enoch in their scriptures. Today we show the startling revelations from the Book of Enoch that have been forbidden mm. from the Bible. Who really is Enoch? Enoch was Adam's great-great-great-great-grandson yeah. and Noah's great-grandfather, who led a holy and faithful life to the Lord. Adam. According to the Bible, he also became the father of Methuselah, the person who lived the longest. He has had several offspring during his three plus centuries on earth. Only two people in the Bible, Enoch and Elijah, appear to be carried directly to heaven without experiencing death. God takes him away after 365 years on earth, Genesis 5.24. Take appears to indicate snatched up or carried away perhaps in the same way that God took away Elijah the prophet. He walked in faith throughout his life and that made all the difference. Whatever happened, he trusted and obeyed God. God was so fond of Enoch that he spared him the agony of death. Many Jewish and Christian traditions revolve around Enoch. He was thought to be the author of the book of Enoch and was also known as the scribe of judgment. Enoch is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, the Epistle to the Hebrews and the Epistle of Jude the latter of which quotes from it. In the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodoxy and Oriental Orthodoxy, he is regarded as a saint. Enoch was a well-known preacher and his sermon was one of God's judgments on humanity. His ministry was a forerunner to Noah's mission as a preacher of righteousness and builder of the ark. Given the world's level of immorality and ungodliness, it was amazing for a man to stand up and pronounce judgment on his neighbors. To learn much more about the mythical figure's background and the supernatural experiences he had, we must turn to the apocryphal books written by Enoch. Scrolls of the Dead Sea At the end of 1946 or the beginning of 1947, some Bedouin boys were tending their goats and sheep near the ancient settlement of Qumran, which is located on the northwest coast of the Dead Sea and what is currently known as the West Bank. One of the young shepherds threw a rock into a cliff opening and was surprised to hear a shattering sound. Later, he and his companions entered the cave where they discovered a collection of large clay jars, seven of which contained leather and papyrus scrolls. The scrolls were purchased by an antiquities merchant and eventually wound up in the hands of several scholars who assessed the texts to be over 2,000 years old. Bedouin treasure seekers and archaeologists were alerted to the discovery. Tens of thousands of other scroll fragments were discovered in 10 adjoining caverns. They add up to between 800 and 900 texts. It was the Book of Enoch which is divided into five books, the Book of Watches, the Book of Parables, the Astronomical Book, the Dream Visions and the Epistles of Enoch with a total of 100 chapters. The Book of Enoch The Book of Enoch is made up of several monumental works they introduce Enoch to the major themes of rewards, punishment, the end of the world, and the last judgment. The first book, which contains chapters 6 to 36, is mostly about angels, the tree of life, Jerusalem, and the universe. The Watcher's book narrates the account of fallen angels from Genesis 6, 1 to 4, who seduced women, created the Nephilim, 
and taught sophisticated knowledge to humanity, eventually leading to the Great Flood and their annihilation. The term Nephilim refers to the fallen ones, who are characterized as huge people, similar to giants. The link between God's sons and the Nephilim is interpreted in several ways. Some believe that the sons of God are fallen angels and that the Nephilim are the progeny they had with human women. This viewpoint was described in the first book of Enoch, a non-canonical Jewish source, and it is still widely accepted. The first book of Enoch also mentions the Nephilim as giants, which seems to fit with beings of vast size. The apparent gigantism of the Nephilim is thought to be due to their supernatural origin, while some have contended that it is theologically problematic to suggest that angels or demons could physically breed with humans. A less supernatural interpretation claims that the Nephilim were simply men who strayed from holiness. Some theologians believe that the sons of God are the descendants of Seth, Adam's righteous son, and that the Nephilim were members of his family who rejected God. St. Augustine and other church fathers, as well as many Jewish theologians, supported this position known as the Scythian view. The Scythian view was often expanded with the notion that the daughters of mankind were the ungodly women of Cain, Adam's wicked son's bloodline. With the Nephilim as ordinary mortals, their enormous stature may be understood literally or symbolically, yet they were unquestionably great fighters. The Parables of Similitude, an apocalyptic novel about the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days, is the second half of Enoch's book. These ancient prophecies of Jesus are completely consistent with the Bible and strikingly comparable to the book of Revelation. The astronomical book describes the stars and their roles in depth. The Dream Visions is a prophecy of all human history, from the beginning of time through the end of times and final judgment. The past, present and future are all meticulously predicted. The structure of the prophecy of weeks is similar to that of the book of Daniel. The final section reminds us of how we should live. Enoch relates the life lessons and wisdom he gained, as well as the fact that we are all subject to God. Finally, the Noah pieces is the unknown account of Noah from the Bible, in which we learn more about his purpose to preserve all humanity, as well as the sufferings of his father Lamech and grandfather Methuselah. Each composition is distinct, yet they are all united by a fundamental theme the punishment of the wicked, and the blessing of the virtuous. The Book of Enoch's Mysteries Several references in the Book of Enoch contradict the Bible. Even though the Bible teaches that Enoch was taken up to heaven years before Noah was born, Noah is mentioned in Enoch chapter 10 verses 1 through 3. The Most Holy and Great One then talked to Lamech's son in the presence of Uriel, according to the text. In my name go to Noah and tell him about the flood, Lamech urged and tell him about the time when the entire earth will collapse. A deluge is scheduled to hit the whole earth and it will wipe out everything that is there. The Bible never says that Enoch returned to earth after being taken to heaven. So how could he have known about Noah and the flood if he penned the book of Enoch? Mm -hmm. In the book of Enoch chapters 10 verses 8 through 9, God blames all of earth's corruption on a demon named Azazel claiming that the entire earth has been polluted by the actions that Azazel taught him to commit all evil. Other than Lucifer, generally known as Satan or the devil, no other demon is mentioned in the Bible. This is not to suggest that there aren't other demons, they're just never identified, and Satan is ultimately blamed for the problems of our world because he is the author of sin. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, Jesus stated, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Also lines 5 to 6 of Book of Enoch chapter 13 imply that the fallen angels repented for their transgressions. The Bible suggests the contrary, stating that Satan and his angels will perish in hellfire. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels says Matthew 25, 41. For the devil and his angels are sentenced to hellfire. It shows that they are reluctant to repent because everyone who repents of their crimes is promised escape from hellfire. The Lord does not waver in his promises, as some perceive slackness, but is patient for us and is not in a position to allow anybody else to perish, but everyone should become remorseful. Not only is it claimed in the book that demons repented, 
but it is also stated that after their initial rebellion, demons were no longer able to contact God, declaring they could not talk with God or lift their eyes to heaven. However, in Job chapter 1, Satan could speak directly to God in heaven about the job and his fidelity. The notion of heaven is also depicted differently in Enoch's book, which depicts God in heaven in an unbiblical way. The ground of the city of heaven is described as being composed of gold in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 21. The city's street was said to be pure gold since it was made of translucent glass. According to the book of Enoch chapter 14 verse 10, his structure was made of crystal. This is simply one of many inconsistencies between the book of Enoch's portrayal of heaven and the Bible. Many more may be found in book of Enoch chapters 14 verses 9 through 25. Many of the Book of Enoch's astronomical and meteorological discrepancies contradict both the Bible and contemporary scientific truths. For example, the Book of Enoch indicates in chapter 33 verses 1 through 4 that Enoch mapped and numbered all the stars in the sky. However, Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 22 states that counting the stars is physically impossible due to their vast number. Astronomers believe that the Milky Way alone contains around 100 million stars, in addition to millions upon millions of additional galaxies. Furthermore, in the Book of Enoch chapter 41, the wind, snow, hail and moon all emanate from a wooden container in heaven. This is absurd, illogical and unbiblical. You may be beginning to see why the Book of Enoch was not included in the Bible at this point. The Book of Enoch has been described as both uplifting and touching. It is a pattern for all that has happened in the past, present and future from Genesis through the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, to the hidden day of judgment. The volume of Enoch contains practically the whole Bible in one book, but the essential question is why it is not included in the Bible. The book is intriguing to read, but it is crucial to remember that the first book of Enoch is not scripture. That is, God did not inspire the book. In numerous early church manuscripts, the text was mentioned in the apocryphal book of Baruch. It repeatedly contradicts the Bible. The book of Enoch belongs to a group of literature known as pseudepigrapha. This implies that the author is not who he claims to be, which makes sense given that the book of Enoch mentions Noah and the Bible says that Enoch was taken to heaven before Noah. As a result, it's much more plausible that the Book of Enoch was written afterwards by someone else who fraudulently claimed to be Enoch's original author. As a result, the Book of Enoch is of little use to Christians seeking to acquire the Gospel teachings. But Jude may have cited from it since it was well known at the time, and the part he quoted from included some inspiring truth that helped strengthen his case for the Gospel. The genuine Book of Enoch is referred to as the Ethiopic Book of Enoch's pseudepigraphal work since the book of Enoch was written after Christ, who was seeking to gather what Enoch stated about his philosophy and teaching, which omits Methuselah based on oral history because the source is unreliable. It is believed that the book of Enoch did not survive among the books of the Bible. Let's hear what you think about the book of Enoch in the comments section. Wow, guys. Wow. <sighs> I'm just sharing some of these informations for the first time. Maybe because it's not in the Bible. I never even thought about it, you know, the book of Enoch. Like he said, the man said it's full of negativity about the angels doing that, you know, the bad vibes and everything. Wow, a lot of information. A whole lot a whole lot to digest from this whole video but I really enjoy this man point of view and let us understand how old the book was and because of negativity that is in the book of Enoch you know they wiped it out they didn't include it in the Bible Enoch is the grandson of Adam Wow thank you so much guys for watching don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like, share, or comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.